How does the angle work? Dork. Hey guys, welcome back to Dental Dork. My name is Chrissy and I'm a registered dental hygienist. Today I'm going to be discussing an extremely controversial topic out there on the agas, how the aga works. Now before we begin, I want to give a disclaimer. I am not an aga provider. I have taken a number of functional orthodontic courses over the last couple of years. I have met with Dr. Steve Galella on, I believe, two separate two or three separate occasions where I was able to discuss some cases with him and ask kind of like a open question forum type of situation. I've only officially taken one AGA course and I am also a patient who has gone through the start to finish with the AGA and I'm about to be going into controlled arch. However, I am not an expert and I don't claim to know everything. I've just been asked a lot on how the AGA works so I figured I would share my perspective, my opinion, and my knowledge which might be valued at nothing. <laughs> Okay, to my knowledge, there are two different kinds of agas. There is a faga, which is a fixed anterior guided growth appliance, and then there is a raga, which is a removable anterior guided growth appliance. Now, in this video, I'll be primarily talking about the faga, which most people just reference as the aga. I think that's better known. However, the raga is meant for anybody under the age of 10, I believe, mostly geared for children. So let's start with what the actual appliance looks like and its parts. So the pack and aspect of the appliance is actually the acrylic pad and this attaches to the springs that get activated on either side. There are also lingual bars which is a metal bar that is cemented to the backside of your front teeth. I believe its only function is to prevent tipping of the teeth as force is applied through that acrylic pad. This appliance is typically activated, those springs are usually turned back um, to apply more pressure on an average of every four or so weeks. Okay, so let's talk about the theory behind how it actually works. And I hate that I'm making this video because it's so controversial out there on whether this does or does not happen. And I will get to my opinion and what I felt occurred for me in my treatment alone. So the faga is used to develop the nasomaxillary complex through using a bone remodeling technique which influences your existing growth centers. So the acrylic pad is used to apply pressure to a nerve called the nasopalatine nerve. That nerve interprets that pressure as microtrauma to that area. By applying a little bit of pressure and microtrauma, it basically stimulates your parasympathetic nervous system, which then will tell your brain to address the problem, which will result in the remodeling of the nasomaxillary complex to the full or closer to the genetic potential that your DNA has. So the idea is that it's not mechanically pushing on the teeth and the bone, but instead it's eliciting a biological response to the pressure, the microtrauma that's created by that acrylic pad. This is super controversial and people don't believe it. There is minimal research, which I hope to make another video on what kind of research is and is not out there on this. However, I want to include in this video my personal opinion on what happened to me during my treatment. So do I believe that the acrylic pad causing microtrauma elicited a biological response to then create remodeling to my nasomaxillary complex? And the answer is yes. However, I have not taken another CBCT or a radiograph that would prove this. And there's a couple of reasons. First, I don't love to overexpose myself, but second, because I know over the next 18 months, I'm headed into the third and final phase of controlled arch. I truly believe that the remodeling will continue past the point of the aga being removed. So I'm looking forward to seeing what my CBCT reveals from start to finish, from before the aga was applied to after controlled arch is completed and even possibly past that because I know this is an ongoing process and it doesn't only happen while the aga is in your mouth, it extends past that point. So no, I have no proof. The other thought that I have is, was it possible that this appliance merely pushed on the back of my teeth, moving them forward and appearing as though new bone is now in that spot, a distal to the canine. And no, I don't entirely believe that is true. However, basic physics would say that when force is applied, something is going to give, right? So I do believe that my teeth moved in the bone to a more anterior position. I think that is evident because my root surfaces are more prominent than they were 
prior to treatment. And this is where a lot of people get scared because, you know, it's a worry that are we gonna push those teeth out of the bone? That's always the biggest concern. I kind of lay between the two. I do believe that my body had a response and remodeled my maxilla and this is evident to me because of the different facial changes I've noticed in my in my cheeks. Um, friends and family have noticed that my face has just changed and they can't really put their finger on it, um, which is kind of cool. I also don't believe that I had six millimeters of room between the very anterior part of my root and the my bone. I don't think that six millimeters pushing on that would create that space. I almost feel like it's a race between how fast can your teeth move through that bone to get more anteriorly positioned in the bone, so I do believe that that did occur, versus how fast can your body's parasympathetic nervous system react with the osteoblast and the osteoclast to create that space occur. I think there's a combination of both of those factors coming into play to achieve the space that was achieved. So, I don't know, it's super controversial out there. However, I do, I feel like I had remodeling of the maxilla. Just too many things were apparent for me and you can watch one of my videos to see some of the differences and come up with whatever theory you wanna come up with how that got there. Um, but while taking the class and just having that foundational knowledge of how all of that works, it just makes sense for, for me and call me crazy, but I think that it did have to do with the remodeling of the maxilla, but also in combination with just basic physics. Oh, if I could also add, I think that Dr. Steve Galella recognizes that there might be some anterior movement of the teeth in the bone because if you look further into the steps of controlled arch he does at least for my treatment plan this might not be true for everybody's but for my treatment plan he does state that retractive orthodontics which is like whoa you're telling us to retract is basically in the anterior teeth and i believe that is to retract them back into the bone so that the eminence on those teeth are not as profound so i think he does recognize a little bit that applying pressure is going to push those teeth more anteriorly so he does recommend in controlled arch pulling them back again but obviously not six millimeters back so those are my thoughts on the AGA, how in theory it's supposed to work and how it worked for me. I hope that gave a little bit more insight on the actual appliance and its mechanisms, if you will. However, if I can go on a little bit of a rant, I think this is just me using logic, I guess, that sometimes people don't get results with an AGA and people wanna know why. Why didn't the AGA work for me? There's a number of reasons why I think it could, also, could not have worked. Two stand out to me. I know there's more that I could go on and on about, but there's two that really stand out to me. First is if the aga is not cemented correctly during the class, they really harped on if it was not cemented in the correct fashion, then it wouldn't work. So make sure, I mean, trust your provider, of course, but just make sure that they're pretty rehearsed in what they're doing. Also, it's patented, the acrylic pad. Any lab can make that appliance and have it be replicated placed there but dr steve galella when you use john's lab when you go through his course and when you use him himself apparently he looks at every single one of those acrylic pads to make sure it's exactly where he would want it to be so that's really important and then the other thing i think is this is all based upon DNA and genetics, right? The blueprint of who we are. And if you place an appliance in somebody's mouth to elicit a response that is supposed to further express someone's DNA or genetic potential, there and it doesn't work, so who's to say that that person's maxilla isn't already to that full genetic potential? So that's also another thought that I had is, if there's no remodelization, is it really truly fault of the appliance? Or is it the body saying, you're right where you're supposed to be? Epigenetics definitely plays a part in this, but if somebody is already developed correctly and the way that their DNA and blueprint says that they should be, then I could see how they wouldn't get any results based upon the theory.
And who knows, maybe I'm completely wrong and have it all wrong and that's okay too. But again, I am not, I am not a specialist in this. I am not an expert by any means. I just find this stuff really fascinating, really interesting. And if anybody knows anything, wants to leave any comments below, I'm definitely open to, you know, learning more and having seen different perspectives. And I try to have an open mind when it comes to this, but it's just really, really fascinating to me. And I am enjoying the process. Thanks guys for watching. I hope that this video was able to help some people, um, unless it was just me rambling. I don't really know if it was valuable or not. So if you could leave a comment below, let me know what you guys think and click subscribe to see more from me as I will, I'm sure will be posting more videos on this topic. Thanks guys and have a great day.